Just quickly, if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I post a new Tom Brady video every day. Peyton Manning made some news this week, guys. 51st touchdown pass of the season. He breaks Tom Brady's record. Tom, of course, had broken Peyton's record to take that hold when he had the 50 touchdowns in 2007. Peyton still has another week, by the way. So, Gary, the question is for first down. Is Peyton the greatest quarterback of all time? No, I, I don't think so. I still put... Clearly, Joe Montana is the best of all time. I think Tom Brady is number two. Peyton is in the top five. He gets downgraded, Ryan, a 9-11 and record in the postseason, only one Super Bowl championship. See, and to me, Peyton Manning is the greatest quarterback of all time the greatest regular season quarterback of all time. You look at his wins and losses, the statistics during the season, off the charts. But the games that we remember are the games in January, the Super Bowls, and as Gary said, well, he has fallen short in that category. Who is then to you if it's not him? Oh, it's Tom overall. Brady. I think Tom Brady's the You think he's the best ever. quarterback oh, of all time? Without question. I, I, and in fact, I think it's by a decent margin. Peyton Manning is such a command of that field, better than anybody I've ever seen. Tom Brady is an exceptional person, and he does his thing with great effort and never gives up. Hi, Tom Tom. Hi, Gam Gam. How are you? Brady. I knew it. I knew there was something about you, Ruth. Hey, what's up, Peyton? Hey, Tom. What's up? Grandma, I used to play football with Peyton. <gasps> Oh, isn't that wonderful? Did you win five Super Bowls, too? <laughs> Shut up, Ruth. <laughs> hey, Tom, the Saints are playing. It reminds me of, of last year, right before opening day, Buccaneers versus the Saints. It's a Friday. I'm headed to my son's flag football practice that I'm coaching. We're undefeated, by the way. And you asked me, like, how to get, like, how I got the Colts offense integrated into the Broncos offense when I signed with Denver. And my first thought was, why are you waiting to 48 hours before the game to ask me that question? But somehow you've got it integrated and you won the Super Bowl. <laughs> I know it took you more than that one game, too. I think it took you about four games into your, your Mike McCoy era. And then I think after about four games, you're like, ah, screw that. Let's just kind of do the things the way you do. But I think I'm kind of actually learning the Peyton Manning offense. I got this dice right, duo right, you know. All these, these formations I've never heard of. So that actually took a while. All, all the language is the same, but at the end of the day, an in cut's an in cut, an out cut's an out cut. I mean, it's just however you call it, it's different verbiage. So we all kind of run the same stuff at the end of the day. Peyton Manning doesn't win the big game often enough to be the greatest of all time. I mean, you got guys that have come back and won games all over the league. Think about it. I mean, Montana's been great for a long time. You got Elway, great all the time. This guy just isn't winning enough big games. And, and, and there's something to that. He is 9-11 in the Not postseason. the first but, round of the playoff. We put you and Peyton Manning in the same group for a long time because of your success at the same time. I'm curious, as you are watching him go through this season, does it take you back to what you went through in 2009, coming back after missing a year and sitting and watching and just stewing about how much you miss it? Yeah, well, he's, I mean, he, what an incredible player he is. And, and I've been lucky enough to be in the same conference as him and, and, and to, to play against him for you know, all these years. And I've enjoyed every moment that I've had being around him. The way he prepares, his leadership ability, and ultimately his performance over a sustained career is really what I've always looked up to. I want to read you what he said about you. I said, what, what do you admire about Tom? Here's what he texted me. His work ethic. He feels like he can and does improve every year. Discipline to take care of his body physically in all different ways. The comfort to stand in the pocket, keep his eyes downfield, and that deep ball throw. Still really good at that. What do you think of Peyton? What are the things that come to mind when I tell you about Peyton Manning? I don't know if there's a bad thing. But, you know, I mean, his <laughs> command, I mean, his ability to get all 11 guys on the same page every single play. He never snaps the ball into a bad defense. I mean, with his accuracy, his touch. You know, he's, he's methodical. I mean, he's, you know, I've been around him. He, he knows what he wants to do. He knows how to accomplish it. When you face somebody long enough, and I'm talking like Coke, Pepsi, McDonald's, Burger King, when you face somebody long enough, they're still your rival, but there's a, there's a certain level of admiration because you become part of their history and vice versa. If I say Bird, I think Magic. If I say Borg, I think McEnroe. I say Nadal, I think Federer. I say Manning, I think Brady, and vice versa. I think, when I say Peyton, I think of Tom before I think of Archie or Eli, his father and his brother. Is that when you, people, you, you I can't underestimate how big Brady and Manning has been.
If I said to you in the last 15 years in the NFL, name the biggest rivalry, it's not teams. It's Brady and Manning. And for the record, whereas Magic and Bird could play for titles, Borg and McEnroe could play for titles. Manning and Brady never could. They could only play in the AFC Championship. And it still trumps virtually every non-Magic Bird rivalry in my lifetime. In the history of the NFL, what's the second biggest personal rivalry? Dion and Jerry Rice? Aikman sort of, maybe, and a 49er quarterback? Maybe. Brady and Manning met 17 times. Tom won the first six. Peyton won the next three. They seesawed back and forth the last eight. Hey, Tom, you're taking all my records, and you also took all my coaches. Bruce Arians, Clyde Christensen, Tom Moore. I mean, I feel like you're, you know, single white female, stage one stalker clinger here, buddy. <laughs> I have more Peyton. You don't want to start with me. I have more Peyton Manning stories at this point. There, I could write a book on the amount of Peyton. All these coaches that, believe me, thought you loved you so much. They gave me every bit of story they ever had. So they better start, you better start mending some of those relationships back because they've given up all the goods. Clyde, Nobody. Clyde said, Tom, how can you destroy 15 years of a relationship by telling Peyton some of these things? So um, Nobody needless to say, you're always, hey, the topic, you're always the topic of conversation in our quarterback room, just so you guys know. The last time they met in the AFC Championship, it was the highest rated that game had been in 29 years. This rivalry has lasted so long, Christine, it's been played in five stadiums. And when you get a rivalry, when I think MJ, I don't think Pistons. It was heated, but it was brief. But when you play somebody and they are a part of your life, they become part of your history. And if you noticed, I don't think this is a coincidence that Tom and Peyton now are friendly, Magic Bird are friendly, Borg and McEnroe are close. Tiger and Mickelson are friendly. Nadal and Federer get along very well. Because the only person that gets Federer is Nadal. And the only person that really gets Manning, really gets him, is Brady. They're linked forever. And when you have a rivalry that is that long, you kind of start to admire the other person. You really do. They become part of your life history. You can't say one without the other. You play, you win one with Tommy, you win one with Peyton. You know what I'm saying? If you you going to number three, who you taking with you? Hey, you gotta go with TV twelve, man. Like, <laughs> hey, yeah, go. Yeah, if anybody thought with TV twelve, you all crazy, man. He do a year in, year out. No matter what weapons he got or what weapons he don't have, it's just like him and his. Like his leadership, man, that he just his winning ways that he built our organization. We had a pretty good team already, but we was missing one of the most important pieces, which was the quarterback. So he came right. there just uh, showing love in the locker room, talking to everybody. Like, the offense don't do good. One day at practice, they bring him up into practice, talk to him, and then the next day they'd come in with a fire lit on them and just do numbers yeah. on us. So, yeah, like TB12, like it ain't like no doubt. We're going top five of all time right now. Number one has to be Tom Brady based on the longevity and then of the eventual heights he hit for sure. On my list, I'm not going to go back to Unitas. I never saw him play. Terry Bradshaw, who where the standards were different, was when I was much younger. I think Tom Brady replaced Joe Montana because we're talking greatest now. Aaron Rodgers, he did not play for the same coach as those guys did, is not nearly as accomplished his legacy isn't what theirs is, even if his peak is maybe higher. I think a lot of people have Peyton Manning or John Elway next or in there somewhere. And I'll just say about Peyton Manning, he's the greatest regular season player in the history of football. I don't really think it's that close. Regular season, no one had comparable value to Peyton. But his performance fell off enough under pressure that I can't put him third. All right, all right. As you all know, this is my first time ever hosting a Super Bowl party. I've been uh, busy on this day most of my life, but uh, glad y'all are here. Who wants to try my 18-layer dip? It's got beans, cheese, bird seed, guac, chocolate chip. One warning, if you're allergic to uh, peanuts or bee stings, I wouldn't eat it. Well, it's a nothing-nothing game after one. I'm just hoping for some clean, competitive football. I don't even have a dog in this fight. And there he is again. Jones backs out of bounds. First down. Woo! The Falcons rise up. 
Oh, it's getting hot in here. Might need some Matty Ice. Who wants Bellinis? Cosmo's coming later. Second half. Touchdown, Atlanta. Dan Quinn thrilled. Seven to nothing, Atlanta. Here is Coleman. He's on. Touchdown. This is hard to believe. 28 to 3. You know, it's tough winning the Super Bowl in the twilight of your career, though. Only the greats can pull it off. Throw. Pass is caught. That's one touchdown. First touchdown of the game for New England. Oh, congratulations. Seriously, I'm happy for you. It's better for everybody, right? At least it's not a blowout now. People will watch the commercials in the fourth quarter. It's better for the economy. Brady. End zone touchdown. <laughs> the ground. Oh, it hit the on, ground. Man. Nobody that makes a catch a like that. House Hunters International is on. All right, we're changing to that. Put the game back. Show. back. The game is over. It's, it's over. not over. Uh, Chris, trivia question. Who is the oldest player to score a touchdown? In NFL history. Oldest player. Oldest score. player to score a touchdown. Hold on. I'm just trying to think. I I, I mean, it's it's got to be Blander or Brady. I'm going to go with Brady. I'm going to go Brady. Yeah. There you go. It was. Okay. My bad. My bad. I forgot you all were all football experts. I'm just Peyton Manning. What the hell do I know? And it's a one-score game in Super Bowl 51. Here's Edelman broken up in the pass. That's a catch. Oh my God. That's incredible. What? It's important to test these. Hand off. Touchdown, James White. I'm sorry, is this too loud? Can you not hear the game? I have chores. I have chores to do. Boy, I hope I don't hit this plug and TV turns off. This is a tie game. It's freaking tied now. Unbelievable. What is this, soccer? Toss to White. He's in. What? Go Falcons. Nice job. Go Broncos. Go Colts. Yep. You two beat it. Don't ever come back. No autographs. <laughs> Unbelievable. Lady Gaga goes missing and now this happens. Worst day ever. That's it for this video. I post a new Tom Brady video every day. So please like and subscribe. That way you'll always have a new Tom Brady video to watch every single day. Thanks for watching.